Remember that night in the garden, you come down to my dressing room, you said, kid, this ain't your night. We're going for the price on Wilson. You remember that? This ain't your night. My night. I could have taken Wilson apart, shall we? So what he gets, huh? What happens? He gets a title shot outdoors in the ballpark. And what did I get? A one-way ticket to Palookaville. You was my brother, Charlie. You should have looked out for me a little bit. Should have took care of me just a little bit, so I wouldn't have to take them dives for the short end money. You don't understand. I could have had class. I could have been a contender. I could have been somebody instead of a bum, which is what I am. Let's face it. You know what was interesting there is that you do a Brando circa 1954. Vintage on the waterfront. Exactly. But you, you do a late model Brando, say uh, 1972? The Godfather. Either way, we're talking genius here. Here, here. Bada bing. Oh, let me get you a drink. Hey, Judith, I thought you was out of here. What? I miss doing Brando's? No way. But in two hours, boys, I'm headed home to Chicago for a real Christmas. Speaking of which, are you coming with or not? Club Paradise, $800, and all the single women you can meet. Well, that's it. I'm out of here. Merry Christmas, Douglas. Mm -hmm. Merry Christmas. Mm -hmm. Merry Christmas. Bye. So? I already told you, I'm going to hang in town. I'm going to my mom's, and I'm going to trim the tree. Interesting. You going to bring Amy to meet your mom? Yeah, I think so. Well, sorry, I'm going to miss that. Watch this. Watch this. <laughs> hey, what about you, Captain? You going back east? Nah, I'm going to spend a traditional Christmas watching college football players kick the hell out of each other in meaningless bowl games. Put down a bet for me. There's no way I'll be able to watch. I got the in-laws coming. Hey, maybe I can come to your mom's house, too. H.T. Yoki? That's me. <clears throat> I'm H.T. Ioki. I'm Miller Internal Affairs. This is Ms. Hogan, Immigration and Naturalization. I realize this is a bad time, but we're going to have to ask you to accompany us downtown. Oh, better pack your bags, Ioki, and straight to Tokyo from there. Want to tell us what's going on? Merry Christmas, Captain. You have reason to believe H.T. Aoki is an alias. What are you, nuts? And that this gentleman may have entered the country illegally and committed fraud in applying to the department. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a second. He's not H.T. Aoki. You're not Harry Aoki. this problem. He is not H.T. Aoki. We know that. He 
Because the computer says Aisti Aoki is deceased. I remember that. They even paid him some death benefits. Which he cashed. Wouldn't you? Turns out the computer is right. Aisti Aoki is dead. Been dead for the last 20 years. 20 years? A few months ago, the department tied into the new Social Security mainframe in Washington. It did a routine confirmation of Social Security numbers. Look for Miss Digits like that. Guess who turned up deceased? H.T. Aoki. Died December 14th, 1967, San Francisco. Then who is he? Hmm. I don't know. He won't tell me. Says he wants to talk to you first. Okay. Who the hell are you? All right, Harry. Let's start with an easier question. Where the hell are you from? Vietnam. North or south? South. What region? Saigon. What neighborhood? Khan Nhat Street. Over near the embassy? You know that's not where it is. I met by the Ritz. Closer to the Central Market. And the Caravelle Hotel. Not such a good neighborhood. We did all right. Come in. Captain Ford. Hello. I wish I could say it's a pleasure. Well, that's the wonderful thing about internal affairs. No one's ever happy to see you. You ready to talk? More or less. Let me make this clear, Officer Aoki. Your best chance, department-wise, is to tell me everything right up front. The last thing you want to do is to lie to me. I understand. This is David Miller. Second interview with H.T. Aoki. Captain Adam Fuller present. It's all yours, son. My real name is Vin Van Tran. I was 14 years old in April of 1975. And I lived in Saigon. It was five days before the fall of the city. ไอ้ตัวนี้เนาะคําทอดลามโหดอนทุยยอมยังคือคอมมายบายดริกทันโมยูลินจึงมึงไอ้ตัวนี้ผมไม่ติดนี่กันจึงมึงไว้ดีไ
Et toi, il faut me dire ça que le poisson quand tu as. Mais ah, quand nan ni mais ah, mais quand quand tu es bancaire, tu es bancaire, tu es toi, tu es quoi mais ça? Mais ça, quand tu l'as mis, oui mais de, mais tu l'as moi pas pour ya. Tu l'as pas fait pour moi. Mais ça ne tourne pas de. The first thought I had was to find my friend Tai Q. Because if we were leaving, he better know right away. There weren't really good or bad neighborhoods in Saigon. They were all bad. I mean, you could live in a big house and have money, but you still live next to people with no money. As a matter of fact. I wasn't supposed to leave the house. Hey, hey, is a great guy, my best friend in the whole world. And he was always saving my ass. His father used to be the baker, and my mom used to send me down every morning before I went to school to pick up a loaf of bread. That's how me and Ty became friends. His dad went off to the war. Then his mom died, so he was sort of passed around from relative to relative. His dad never came back. A lot of dads never came back. Tai Q was smart. He could hustle. He was also the captain of the Starship Enterprise. I was okay, because I was the SWAT commander. I told him I was leaving, and uh, he was cool about it. He said he'd probably be leaving too. You see, me and Ty didn't worry too much about the war. We figured Saigon was the best place to be. Besides, if the Viet Cong ever broke through the defenses, we would head over to the presidential palace where the tanks were. They would certainly let us in, I mean, I mean, what were they gonna do? Turn away a SWAT commander and the captain of the Enterprise? How did you guys get out? That's where the story gets interesting. Pretty interesting already. So I don't get it. If you're Vin Van Tran, who's H.T. Aoki? He's an infant who died in San Francisco 20 years ago. That didn't take long to find out, Captain. Let me see if I can put it together, Harry. Right before you applied to the department, you went to San Francisco and somehow got access to the death files. I posed as a writer for a student newspaper. Clever. Then you found a Japanese infant who died and you stole his social security number. Very good. Should have been a detective. And you soon may not be. Why'd you do that, man? Because I didn't think a Vietnamese refugee would have a rat's chance of getting onto the department. You're probably right. Why didn't you just legally change your name to H.T. Aoki? I was going to. I even filled out the papers right here in the chapel. Look, I didn't want to open up a whole can of worms. Well, it's open now. Whoa, got a punch out. Early dinner tonight. How are the old in-laws? Great, they got snowed in in New Jersey. <laughs> See ya. Captain, gentlemen, Mello. What's the damage? Well, there's good news and there's bad news. Tell them the good news first. You're not suspended. That's good. Bad news is you're assigned to a desk pending an internal investigation, which will determine if there's going to be a review board hearing. What's the likelihood of a hearing? It's going to happen. Until then, you are not to interact with the public in the manner or scope of a police officer. He knows the routine. We got a problem, Captain? Yeah, I think we do. We have another session in the morning. Oh, 
Don't be late. Hey, take it easy, I hope. Look, at least you're not suspended. Yeah, and they can't take Christmas away from you. So come on. Don't be late for Hanson's mom. With Amy. Future ex-Mrs. Hanson. Look, why don't you guys go ahead, huh? I hate to ruin Christmas for you. Uh-uh. I passed up Club Paradise to see this thing through. What are you gonna do, Harry? Walk the streets on a cold night. Desperate and lonely. Only to find yourself drinking alone in a bar? Hitting on some strange woman who has nowhere to go for Christmas. Who charges you for her company? I think I saw this movie. Ayuk! Or whatever your name is. It's Christmas. And Mrs. Hansen has a tree to trim. I'd really like you to be there, Harry. guys all the time. Then, we help her move. Why don't you give her this? Great idea, but I think this little card that says love Tommy will give me away. Yeah. Hey, I oak. You with us or against us? I know, I know. I know. Christmas cheer. Christmas <laughs> roasting on an open fire. This is for you. Merry Christmas. Why, thank you. That's very sweet of you. Mine is, uh... Still at the store, huh? Sure. So, I heard about your problem with the department. Mom! Well, I hope we can straighten it out. I hope so, too. What do we call you? Harry's fine. Can they deport you, Harry? Mom! It's a reasonable question. Look, Harry's fine. He's not depressed. You said he was depressed. <laughs> Isn't he cute when he's embarrassed? I always felt the same thing. You ever see that look he gets on his face when he knew he knew the answer to something? Yeah. Yeah, I've seen that look. <laughs> answer the question, Harry. What question? Can they deport you? No. We were given immediate resident alien status. They gave us green cards right away when we got to the United States. Yeah, here's your green card. Go open a restaurant. Yeah, exactly. Mom, Harry was telling us about TV over there. They watch the same shows we did. Really? Oh, yeah, um, we watch a lot of TV. Um, the Wild Wild West, uh, Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, Combat. They ran combat on TV in Vietnam? Oh, yeah. It was, um, it was a big hit. Then the war started coming to us live and in person. Yeah. Yeah, I could have gotten in a lot of trouble for this. But what the hell was my father gonna do? Leave me behind? My mood changed pretty quick though when Taikyu told me his relatives were staying. I said goodbye to Tai Kyu the night before. I knew it wouldn't be the last time I saw him. No way. He was too good. What do you think? 
I think it's the most unusual case I've ever been involved in. What's going to happen to me? Well, a lot in your application to the department, that's cause for immediate dismissal. I know that. I want to know what my chances are. What do you think they'd do at the hearing? I have no opinion. I, I just, I gather facts. Something you should be asking your lawyer. Captain Fuller? Jeffrey Liebster. Nice to meet you, Liebster. I'm Mitch T. Aoki. Pleasure to meet you. You're quite a celebrity downtown. Thanks, yes. Ah, listen, it can't hurt. A high profile puts more pressure on the review board to avoid an unpopular decision. Liebster's department defended me on the drunk driving charge. Yeah, I remember. How are you guys on fraud? I guess we're going to find out, huh? I'm going to need the officer's complete packet. No problem. I read the transcripts of your interviews with the headhunters. It's quite a story. I hope the review board appreciates it. A lot will be riding on the testimony. Plus, of course, a recommendation from your commanding officer. Thanks for the support, Captain. I'll do what I think is right. I get the feeling there's more going on here than you being upset because I lied on a piece of paper. Maybe. I would have thought you, of all people, Captain, would understand where I'm coming from. Oh, I understand where you're coming from. I spent 13 months there. The problem is I don't know who you are. We didn't know who you were then, and I still don't know who you are now. Well, then maybe you should think about what happened to us when you people pull out. Hey, my boy! Yeah, no good, Mama. Ba má tờ đang đi kiếm hành lý. Ồ, oh, ở tàu đó nó ổ đằng kia kìa. Tao phi đi nha, tại vì cái ông bà bô sắp tới rồi. For sure, my parents had made it. Uh, it was a big boat. We looked for several hours and weren't there. <sighs> I never made it off the beach. First time um, I've ever been on a boat, you know. My parents were dead, and um, Taiki was dead.
see, the food situation was pretty bad. It was like having 150 people show up for dinner on a Tuesday. It was like this for days, man. I mean, you'd be in line for two or three hours. Then I got an idea. Hello. Hey, hello. Hello. I had hello. picked up some English, mostly from a sailor on the boat. How you doing? What's your name? Your name? Vin Van Tran. Hey, Vinny. My name's McKay. McKay. McKay? Yeah. McKay. Nice meeting you. <laughs> Corporal McKay had a kind face. I wanted to be his friend, but what I really wanted was a job. No more waiting in line. I was the line. It was fun for a while. Then it became work. I got tired, but I knew I was on track. I had started thinking like Tai Q. I had to think fast because more people were arriving every day. We were running out of food. No one was prepared for this. Hey, sport. How you doing? Doing good, McKay. Good. Question. Where are we? You have food? Thanks, I already ate them full. Come, come. Come. Wait a minute, where are we going? I'm still hungry, I've been eating on the line all day. Hungry? Who? Who's hungry? Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Forget it. Look, I could get in a lot of trouble for this. You're not even supposed to be out here. Come on, give me a break, huh? Please. I could feed the people in my tent. I was a hero. But all I could think about was my mom and dad, and about Tai Q. Harry, are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> I'm okay. I just thought that I had put all of this out of my mind, you know? Put Tai Q out of my mind. You feel guilty, huh? Yeah, whenever I think about it. Harry, he made a choice. But if it wasn't for me, Jude... If it wasn't for you, Harry, he'd still be in Vietnam. Like, you know what went on there after the Kong took over. What kind of life do you think he would have had? At least he would have been alive to live it, OK? Sorry, so, um, I didn't mean to ask about you. I, how was your trip? Oh, great trip. 
great. Uh, there's no snow, but there's plenty of rain. My parents are fighting. I think I've caught a cold. And my best friend's getting divorced after only two years of marriage. But other than that, it's been a blast. Good. Yeah? Thanks for calling. Come in. Can we talk? Sure. Close that door. It's about Harry. What about him? He's pretty freaked out about this thing. Yeah, I know. Well, what are you going to do about it? Well, what do you think I should do, Hanson? You think you ought to show him a little support? After he lied to me? He didn't lie to you. You're right. He lied to all of us. You know what I mean. I think there's more to it. Meaning? Meaning, I don't know. Meaning uh, there's something else going on here. I don't know. Something went on over there. Bingo. A war went on over there. Harry was not the enemy. Oh, no? And what do you know about it, Anson? I figure you were about four years old when I was shipped over there. I know that we were fighting the Viet Cong and the North Vietnamese. We were fighting everybody! The only people on our side were us. That's bull. Let me tell you something, Anson. Everybody's got a story about the war. Mine's about a buddy that lived through two tours. 22 months. Sergeant Reggie Peterson from Roanoke, Virginia. Reggie saved my butt a couple of times. We're coming out of a cafe one day in Saigon. This is toward the end of the war. Reggie goes across the street to get the Jeep, while I go over to a stand to get cigarettes. Next thing I hear is the Jeep. Exploding. 14-year-old kid is running down the street. He'd rolled a grenade under the jeep. I chased him. I couldn't find him. That has nothing to do with H.T. Aoki, or who he is now. I don't care if he changed his name. I don't care if he lied to the world. He did it for a good reason. Do you know how many Vietnamese native officers we have in this department? How many? One. Now. I went from Guam to Port Chaffee, Arkansas. From there, I was sponsored out by a Methodist church in St. Louis, Missouri. It didn't take long for me to get sponsored because I had no mother and father. I went to live with a woman named Bessie Mason. Mrs. Mason had a big old house, and all her children were grown up and had children of their own. At first, I called her Mrs. Mason. Then she became Grandma Bessie. How are you ever going to learn English watching policemen shoot at each other? I like this uh, program. Program. You're going to like this one better. I must have been the only 14-year-old in the world who had to watch Sesame Street. I was the first Vietnamese person in St. Louis. I went to high school there. Did pretty good once I learned English. 10Q. I couldn't hear you, Bert. 10Q, 10Q, 10Q. You're welcome, you're welcome, you're welcome, Bert. I had started thinking about my future. And right then and there, I knew what I wanted to do for a living. 
After graduation, I came here. I had taken a trip to San Francisco and found a new name, which you know all about. I didn't think a Vietnamese refugee would have a very good chance of getting into the department. Anyway, I was accepted as H.T. Aoki and went through the academy. finished in the top 5% of my class. I was then assigned to the Jump Street program under Captain Janko. Thank you, officer. What officer Aoki has left out of the story? is the next four years of exemplary work in the line of duty. A near perfect jacket and three commendations. And he's part of a unique undercover program. Moral issues of the war in Vietnam aside, the people of Vinh Van Tran's country have suffered plenty. Yes. He lied on his application. Yes, that is cause for dismissal. But let's face the truth, gentlemen. This police department has two discrimination suits pending right at this moment. We don't have an exemplary record in that area. H.T. Aoki had no real criminal intent fundamental in how we determine what is a crime. He had no intent to harm, but rather an intent to serve the public. I'd like to call Captain Adam Fuller. Captain, do you have a statement you wish to make to the review board? Yes, I do. When an officer thinks he's done right and then suffers the full force of government coming down on him, it's a pretty terrifying thing. I understand what he's going through and have sympathy for him. H.T. Aoki is a very good police officer. He has my full recommendation and support, and I implore you to allow him to stay in this department. You recognize this, Harry? Yeah. This is one of my name change applications. Where did you find it? It was in Captain Jinko's old file cabinet. Found it last night. No kidding. Apparently he stamped it and filed it away before he died. OK, so uh, what does this mean? Well, it means we have one more piece of evidence for the review board. This just might pull your head right off the chopping block. Really? Really. It demonstrates the officer's willingness to correct the original application. I'm going to submit it right now. They're not due for a decision until tomorrow. That's, uh, that's great. I oak. You're as good as back. Give me the 10 bucks you owe me. Well, guys, happy ho, ho, ho. Hey, oh, good. Thanks, guys. Congratulations, Harry. Thanks, Captain. Do um, you guys want to give us a minute here? Sure. Look, uh, Harry, I just wanted to tell you that, um, 
Well, I would have done exactly the same thing you did if the circumstances were reversed. I appreciate that. I was somewhere I didn't want to be. And I had no control over it. I was forced to go somewhere I didn't want to go. I guess I had no control over it either. At least I had somewhere to go back to. I guess, um, we're just a couple of victims, huh? Yeah, I guess so. Don't you guys have some work to do? Hey, relax, Captain. It's Christmas. All the kids are out of school. Whatever crimes they're committing, they're committing in Florida. Yes, yes, yes! I'll turn in your uniform to... Yeah, come here. Yeah, I'm not coach. Sure. Now, I'm not one to be cynical, Captain, but uh, a Christmas miracle? Well, uh, yeah, uh, these things happen. This time of year. A two-year-old piece of paper from the bottom of Aoki's drawer winds up in Jenko's old file cabinet. Why not? Well, because Jenko never filed a thing in his life. Well, maybe he's filing things now. Sal, you work at the chapel? Oh, uh, yes, ma'am. Oh, you're the... Uh, I'm the maintenance engineer. All right. Sal's licensed to work at a nuclear power plant. Uh, yeah. We're just waiting for an opening. Okay. <laughs> I'll get it. I believe you. I remember when Tommy was that age. I must have gone through three sets of dishes before we went plastic. My kids can shadow plastic. <laughs> All right, that's enough. Knock it off! Oh, very effective. <laughs> oh, yeah? No, <laughs> I just love getting out of the house. So do I. I like to make a toast. I just think that it's great that um, we all here together to share the holidays. And um, I like to make a toast to the family. To all of us, however we got here. To take you, never did get here. Reggie Peterson of Roanoke, Virginia. And to everyone else we left over.